we are joined by Dominga Ndala of the LPM Youth Command, who will reflect on the issue of suspended MPs Bernardo Swartboy and Henny Sebe. But before we go into that interview, please have a look at the front page. Joining us is Dominga Ndala, the leader of the LPM Youth Command. But yes, good evening, Ofane. How are you? I'm fine, Dominga. How are you? I'm good. Um, uh, yesterday, uh, the LPM leaders, uh, Henny Sebeb and Bernardo Swartboy, appeared. Uh, they were supposed to appear before a parliamentary committee on privileges. Um, yes. But it, it appears that um, they, 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 uh, that they were not present if one goes by the report of the Ventuk Observer. Uh, uh -huh. Would you tell me firstly the rationale, because I also want to get to the question of the, I also want to get to the issue of the Supreme Court um, uh, session that, is what, that was underway. Yes, um, thank you for the question, Ohone. Um, well, they were supposed to appear before the Committee of Privileges and Humanities, but because of obvious reasons, and they could not make it. But we had the representation of our lawyers, Patrick Coulter, who was standing in on, on their behalf because they could not make it. But uh, as uh, And also for other obvious reasons, because the, the reason why they also could not attend is because they had to prepare for for the for the supreme court uh, ruling which was scheduled for today so so those are the reasons why they they didn't appear so today in the morning um we had uh, we, we, we had a hearing at the Supreme Court for obviously to challenge the ruling of Judge Miller in the High Court, which was whether the Speaker, Mr. P P Peter Kachavivi, acted within his jurisdiction to suspend the members of Parliament without consulting um, the, rebel, the relevant committees involved, which is the Committee on Standing Rules and Order, and as well as the Committees of Immunities and, uh, immunities and Privileges. I think, uh, according to our understanding, um, the only... But the, the only parties that 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 should suspend members of parliament is political parties, but then the speaker acted ultra virus by suspending the two members of parliament without giving them a fair hearing or without consulting the relevant committees. So those are some of the reasons why we 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 actually opted to challenge um, the, the 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 decision of the high court because if we do not challenge it, then it will be subject to abuse. Then the then the speaker will have powers to act. In any in any way he place he pleases to, to to act, and then obviously that will amount to dictatorship in, in in parliament or rather the national assembly, and also just the overall within the political spectrum of, of Namibia. So that's the reason why we actually opted to go to the Supreme Court and challenge the decision that was made in the High Court. Okay. Um, the, the the session that the two MPs were supposed to attend um, this, uh, in the in the before the before the committee, do you uh -huh. think them being an absentia would have any bearing on the end result of that process? Well, I think we can't preempt that, Ohone. Um, I think it's 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 actually fair enough that um, that 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 for, for in the first instance, I think the speaker was actually supposed to act fairly. He was then first supposed to consult the relevant committee. So our thinking is, if the speaker is not willing to take the right route or to consult the relevant parties that are involved, why do we then have to abide to what he's trying to do? I think it won't ha we can't really say whether it will have any impact or not, but I think we have seen already from, from, the, from, from the ruling of the High Court that some, somehow, somewhere, uh, the, the, the court has not pronounced itself whether the speaker has acted ultra violence or the speaker has acted within his jurisdiction. So those are some of the issues 
that 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 that, that, that those are some of the issues also that actually made us to go to the Supreme Court because I think they have the final say, and we are actually excited and we are looking forward to the decision of the Chief Justice. So them not attending the the the. Uh, the com them not appearing before the committee of, of privileges, I don't think it will necessarily have any effect on, on the outcome. Because now we are there to actually seek for a, a, what we call a declaratory relief. That is now when the court needs to pronounce itself whether the speaker has acted within his jurisdiction or not. And um, moving right along, um, recently we, 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 there, there, there have been news reports coming out that um, your uh, LPM um, MP Utaramutu, there seems to be attempts to, to mute her in, in, in response to what is happening in Eswatini, you know, with the, with the riots against um, King Mswati. Uh, yes. What, what bearing does this have on, 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 on democracy within SADC and Southern Africa? Should... Uh, Honorable Mutu now, you know, given what is happening? Well, that's a very important question. I think, first of all, we all have to admit that democracy democracy itself in, in Africa, it, it has been eroded. Um, I think there has been uh, several attempts to actually suppress um, the, the young MP to express her, her, her to express herself in, in SADC PF recently, I think she just got a call from the SADC SG not to uh, appear on a talk show in the capacity of the SADC forum. And this makes us wonder, is this perhaps this censoring ship and this dictatorial ship uh, tendency, is this perhaps the reason why the SADC as a regional body has not been able to address the political instability on the continent. I think we live in a very sad state of affairs if we then have to zone down to, for, to preventing people that serve in, 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 in the SADC forum within their capacity and they have been elected leaders, they, 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 they legit, legitimate leaders that should, that should, that, that, that they should appear in the SADC forum, then they have to be censored. I think uh, we, as an Afri as a region, we are headed to in a very, very wrong route if if we then have to to censor what people should say and what should and what people should not say. And also, this also just uh, demonstrates the ineffectiveness of of the SADC as a, as a regional body because it has not yet pronounced itself on the political instability or political events that is taking uh, place in Eswatini and as well as the, the the looting and the unruly behavior in, in South Africa. So 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 I think as a region we are failing and and it's time that we go down to 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 the drawing board and actually define what democracy is in contemporary African politics because certainly our democracy is being eroded. And then um, um, I want to move on to another topic and this relates now to um, the LPM uh, within the city of Vintu Council. Now we, yes. know, we know that the LPM is not part of the coalition. Yes. Uh, and if one looks at what the coalition had promised, um, you know, if one looks at what was said by the mayor and what was carried in, 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 in newspapers was that the, the, the appointment um, of, a, of a new city police chief would have, be, uh, would have been in the works now. And also um, the conclusion in terms of fi finding now a new city of Ventuk CEO. Um, yes. If one looks at activity on that, but do you think or do you see this coalition, uh, this coalition council achieving its objectives? Well, um, I think uh, <laughs> looking at how things are moving forward, I think first of all, most we we do not know the 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 the, 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 the fundamental principles of, of the coalition. Um, we are told that they have no they have not signed any member any mem understanding any memorandum of understanding. So we do not know what are the principles of the coalition. Are they going to carry out land audits? What are they going to do? And 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 and, and, and as the way things start, uh, seems like it seems like there is a lot of political infights within the coalition. A lot of councillors are not agreeing to to a lot of things. So it's it's a matter of who is now the political hero. Because because if we then have 
to um, if, if we then have to me to measure their performance, you would probably think that they have fallen short on, on, on most of the things that they have promised. I think in terms of uh, delivering land, uh, we have heard at the beginning of the year that they are going to allocate 5,000 plots to, to landless Namibians, particularly young people. But up to date, we have not gotten any update on how far they they went about in terms of uh, delivering land and then they, we have also had attempts of them transforming Bantuk into a smart city and now today's newspaper we we, we have just seen of how the, they do not want to display or to display the information in regards to to the smart city so so one might really say that the coalition might be falling apart because of political infight and also because of people wanting to be portrayed as political heroes or political demigods. So, so I think uh, um, we, with our coalition, we might not expect um, much if we, if we have to put it that way. And then lastly, uh, Dominga, I, I want to know yeah. from you, uh, you know, firstly, your stance or your party's stance on the issue of, of, of vaccinations, because one would assume that uh, there is a slow uptake to the COVID-19 vaccinations. You know, what are you doing to actively encourage um, members of your party um, and, of course, your loved ones to get vaccinated against COVID-19? Well, I think often one thing we need to realize is the matter of being vaccinated or not, it's not a matter of grandstanding. I think it's a personal choice and, and we should respect people's wishes. Um, whether people are, are vaccinated or not, that is entirely up to them. I think with the with the rollout of the vaccination, I think it's the World Health Drive and it's also the Ministry of Health and Social Service in Namibia's drive that people should be vaccinated because if you are vaccinated, um, you have a higher chance of not contracting the COVID-19 uh, virus and also of uh, protecting yourself and your loved ones. So, and also those that do not want to be vaccinated, that is entirely they are their choice because it's a human liberty and it's also enshrined in our constitution that you have the freedom to decide on how to live your life. So I think it should not be a matter of grandstanding whether we should be vaccinated or not, but rather it should be a personal choice uh, for people to be vaccinated. And we as a party, we welcome every person's decision, whether you are vaccinated or not. We welcome that we live in a democratic dispens dispensation and it should be entirely your wish whether you want to be vaccinated or not. But of course, as a, as a youth wing, uh, we have to, uh, last, we have um, launched a COVID-19 COVID campaign. Um, we are actually um, encouraging people to observe the COVID-19 protocols that have been put in place, particularly young people uh, that have been acting recklessly in terms of observing the protocols that uh, have been put in place. And we have also told those that are able and those that are willing to be vaccinated, they should do so because it's their constitutional right. And we have also uh, plea with those that are not vaccinated to also just adhere to the protocols that that, that are in place. So I think we as a party, we welcome each and everybody's uh, decision because, I mean, it's after all your choice to decide whether you are vaccinated or not. Thank you very much for joining us on the Evening Review, Dominga. Thank Always you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning into that interview. Please do stay tuned for the weather.